pathways at the end of the university degree or the tertiary education would become optional, not compulsory. So you can choose not to do national service and there will be nothing wrong with that. So we called up tonight someone who once headed the national service scheme to have an engagement with him on what he makes of this particular proposal. Uh, Vincent Senam Kwagbenu uh, was national service director or executive director of the national service scheme when I did my national service many years ago. Sir, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Oh, good evening, uh, Sanda. Um, first of all, give us the idea behind national service. Why did we as a state decide to introduce national service? And then I'll ask you specifically about what the vice president is promising and what do you make of that? Oh, okay. We all know that um, around 1978, um, 79, thereabouts, um, the, the, the National Union of Ghana Students, and for that matter, the student population in our tertiary institution, uh, decided to support government by offering their, their service to the state uh, voluntarily. Uh, and that was the beginning of the, the national service. They, they go and collect cocoa. They build all manner of things, build uh, classroom blocks and several other things without salary. And then when the Lehman administration came, decided to pass it into law. Um, so ever since, uh, fa- those who complete tertiary institutions enroll and uh, do national service. Uh, under the law, it's mandatory. And basically, the national service scheme has some common uh, objectives. is to, sub- to encourage the spirit of national service among all segments of the Ghanaian society and also to design prog- to undertake projects that are designed to combat hunger, illiteracy, disease, and unemployment. So you'll notice that uh, mostly national service personnel are posted to communities where there are no teachers, where there are no health workers, and where um, the services of graduates are needed. And ever since it's been ongoing, you know, uh, it also helps the national service personnel to develop skilled manpower through practical training. And so it serves as a training ground for uh, those who want to go into practical work, like farming, like uh, if you are an engineer, if you are posted to to some of these facilities, you get a hands-on experience. But also the very important one that we, we as a country cannot flag off, is that the national service scheme is to promote national unity and strengthen the bond of citizenship. And that is key because it is believed that through this, Deployment. If you school, you you are born in Accra. You school throughout Accra, and you are sent to Boko to do national service. Uh, it's a new environment where you build relationships there, and 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 vice versa. So people are posted to areas they have no knowledge about, but are able to live among the people, understand their culture, and then also when you become somebody tomorrow, a big person, you'll be able to advocate. You understand the ethnic nuances in the, from those areas. And people, uh, today somebody was contributing to a debate on radio on this issue. So look, even national service personnel marry from outside their region, which probably is also one good thing. I see. So it helps with the national unity and cohesion. Now, the vice president has not given us specific reasons as to why he wants it to be voluntary. But I'm suspecting it has to do with the burden on the national purse. So that, for instance, every national service personnel currently takes 700 CDs. Multiply that by 850, 750 CDs. Multiply that by the number of people who are doing national service every year. That would be a huge figure. So I guess it is um, 
an issue of how to 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 lessen the burden on the national press. The figure is seven hundred fifteen cities currently. Oh, Sanda, if that is it, then the 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 vice president is probably getting it wrong. That, that's my because, that's my that's my guess. Uh, because, I, it's not. Yeah, I don't know me, if it's mm. uh, because you see, national service is free. Uh, what is paid service person is typing. That is about forty percent. Of course, graduates will earn when they are employed into the public service. 40% of what they will earn when they are employed into the civil service or the public service. So, if you are able to harness the resource, this huge number, they are rather saving the state billions of cities through voluntary this mandatory national service. So if the, if the government wants to have cheap labor, it should not make it, uh, what do you call it, voluntary. Probably, you see, if the vice president, if, if he had done national service, and I believe he didn't do national service, these are the people who do go abroad, school abroad, when they come and they get the juicy job, and they don't know the nuances of the institutions that the, our parliament established. So you don't you don't know this as a fact that he did not do national I know, service. I know for a fact that he didn't do national service. Doctor Bamia did not do national service. He he didn't do national service. And is that is that not service. is that not offensive to the law if you do not do national service? Are you not supposed it's, to not take up a public office? Precisely the case. Precisely the case. Because I don't I don't think anybody you stand that had done national service. And you know you you, sa- you signed my certificate, so that I'm certain of yes. Come again? I'm saying you signed my certificate, so that I'm very certain of. I did my national yes, service. And when and when uh, this issue about Baumia doing national service came up in 2012, I mean uh, the records show that he didn't do national service. You understand? So he didn't understand how much this country is saving from the services of uh, personnel. Look, a huge number of our uh, uh, Ghanaian graduates are teaching in communities that there are no train teachers. And it happens every year. And only God knows how much they are saving. And probably we have to be putting these figures out. Look, we started deploying nurses on a national service scheme from 2011. Now, it's because of the, our deployment that you find nurses manning the cheap compounds that are located in hard-to-reach areas. And then you say you want to make it optional, or you make you want to make it, what do you call it? Yeah, he said it to be optional, not compulsory. So you may choose not to do it or not. You can go I'm straight sorry. into work. Uh, do we have anything that is optional in Ghana that way? Even when it's mandatory, we have people like Baumia keeping national service. So if, if you want to, if you want to, and I, I go interview someone like President Kufour. They were the proponents of this national service thing when he was in parliament in the 1970s. And you understand, when I was in national service, people, old men walked to me and said, look, you must keep protecting this scheme and allow it to run the way we envision it. So I, I'm, I'm most scandalized to hear the vice president say that he doesn't need our youth to be disciplined. He doesn't need our youth to understand this country because all he thinks about is employment, employment. In any case, he NAPCO was instituted under the vice president's office. NAPCO, Nation Builders Corps, where they claim they, um, they recruited and employed 100,000 people. What is the fate of NAPCO? You see, so... Is it that the vice president doesn't want the youth to develop skills and deploy their skills to build this country? What at all is the motive for scrubbing national service? I, I need to understand it. I think behind the scene, you need to interview him and understand. His spokesperson will be on point blank in the next 20 minutes or so, and I'll be, I'll be asking him specifically on the issue of national service. But... For you, national service must remain, not scrapped. We must even improve the scheme and ensure that we harness the resources 
the human resource of this country to the national service scheme properly so that we can continue to maximize the benefits. Look, I school in Canteen Primary in Damango. I had national service personnel. They taught me in the 70s. When I started teaching, I taught with national service personnel. And today, we can both go to the scheme head office and find out that as we speak, they are reviewing the law to make it even an authority under the MPP, under uh, Nana Akufuado. The law is being reviewed to even give it more authority. Then you out of the blue camp and say you want to make it voluntary. I don't get it. Let's leave it here. When I get them, uh, his spokesperson, I'll speak to them. Thank you so much for speaking to us tonight, sir. You're welcome. That's